Today's video, Pamela Isley gets a pretty lethal ride as she drives around Gotham in her 1953 Chevy Bel Air. Thanks to the folks over at Jada Toys, today we will be having a look at the DC Comics bombshells, Poison Ivy and her 1953 Chevy. Thrilled for the fact I will be having a look at another one of these awesome bombshell diecast cars. We're going to start it with the front of the bumper to the back of the bumper. We're going to get ourselves some measurements going on here. There we go. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, from bumper to bumper, her Chevy is 8 inches in length. Now in centimeters, I know. I know you want to see it in centimeters. Centimeters, you're looking at 20.5. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Well, we're going to just move Pamela Isley out of the way here. And we're going to just put her car right there. I want to do some comparisons between that one and the one that we just recently had a look at. This is the 1957 Chevy Corvette, which just so happened to come included with Batgirl. Uh, well, we are, well, we have two cars here. Let's look at the two figurines that come included with them. They are very drastically different from one another, but still sporting the Gotham's, the DC Bombshells motif. I'm not really sure which one I like more, but I have to say both of them are quite intricately detailed, especially when you look at the paint of these. Imagining, if you will, how small this figure is. Well, I mean, there it is next to my bruised thumb. The figure is very small, but look at how much detailing they put in the eyes, the mouth area even in the Venus flytrap that's wrapped its way around uh, uh, Pamela here. There's even some nice detailing that's been added to the smaller one here. Looks like she has three of them. And colors on her are primarily green. A lot of green on top of green on top of green. Even like her flesh tone here is in green. Uh, I want to think that looking at her, she almost looks like she has arm articulation, but that's not actually the case. It's just the way that the figure has been posed. I don't think you can actually move it. Even though at least, at the very least, the flytrap here is a little bit on the softer side. Both of these are a lot bigger than some of the other Jada toy diecast figure releases that we've seen to stores. I think primarily those ones usually are about that high. So you get a much bigger sized figure to go along with these sweet rides that come included with them. So there are your two, there are your two bombshells. Part of me still thinks I think Batgirl I like more than than uh, Poison Ivy here, but both of them are very, very cool little pieces. And nice accompanying pieces, again, if you want to have them on display with their corresponding cars. So we've really already had a look at this one. There's not a whole lot I want to spend a lot of time on looking at this and comparing it. But I did want to bring this in so that you can see the difference in vehicles that Jada Toys has opted for these. Now, both of these are Chevys. Of course, this one here is the 57 Chevy Corvette. This one here is the 53 Chevy Bev, uh, Bel Air. Uh, this one has a much more vintage look to it versus the purple sports car-like uh, car that came included with Batgirl. But uh, about the same length, I guess, would be the safe assumption here. Roughly about the same length to one another. If you want to see the full review of Batgirl's car, it's actually, I just did it, oh, I want to say a few days ago, so it should be pretty easy to find as we certainly don't want to take anything away from this fantastic looking car that comes included with Poison Ivy, which I can't help but think, looking at it, kind of looks like almost even something that you would expect to find Joker driving as well. Um, it's got some nice detailing here. I'm just going to move Poison Ivy out of the way here. It's got some nice detailing, a lot more sticker application than I think the one that came in with Batgirl. Uh, here on the front, you've got a license plate that says Bombshells. Hopefully the camera is catching that. You've got the Chevy Crest there on the front. Of course, you've got the big branding there of Poison Ivy's uh, portrait, along with her signature, Poison Ivy, on the side. You've got some Bel Air. You've got the Bel Air logo there on the side. And some you know, bumper stickers there and some Chevy stickers. The only disappointing thing is I've noticed that the back trunk doesn't open. Batgirl's car, however, did have an opening trunk as well as an opening hood. 
Um, when it comes to poison ivies, the only one that does actually open of the two is the trunk or the front of the hood here, which shows this awesome looking chrome uh, motor you can see on the interior there as well as the grill. Talking a little bit about some fragile things about this, this one does definitely have a lot more to it. The side mirrors, for example, are plastic. You want to be careful that you don't clip those. The antenna is also plastic. And the front, um, I'm not really even sure, the front little marker here that's on the end of the hood also is in plastic. If anything could be clipped, it's this crest that sticks its way out from the from the top of the car here. You just want to be careful, a little bit careful of that. Uh, one thing about the car here it does have opening doors. We can open up both sides. Interior-wise, you get a nice, almost silver uh, steering wheel. Primarily, most of the interior here is all black. Back girls was basically all black as well, except for the steering wheel. Some nice detailing that's been added to the interior of the doors. Hopefully the camera's got uh, there. Do it on this side. Might be a little bit easier to catch that. There we go. You can see the old world way of rolling up and rolling down windows. Any child growing up in the 80s also experienced that. I don't think it was even until the late 80s, early 90s that we got a car in the household that had automatic windows. So quite quite knew very much what it was like to roll up and roll down a window. You got the door handle happening right there. It looks like some locking mechanisms there as well. Love again the fact that the doors open and close. Kind of a shame though that the back doesn't open. I wonder what the reasoning was why they didn't end up doing that. The vehicle is very brightly colored here. Again, getting some cues for almost what I would expect a Joker or even for that matter a Riddler would almost be getting. Especially the giveaway for it being Riddler is the very bright orangey red uh, hood, uh, rooftop I should say, that's on the top of the car. Um, definitely looks like something I would expect to get from a Riddler vehicle. Uh, the tires are very large and they, you can see there's a nice silver rim around them. The tires are not rubber, uh, they look like they're, they appear to be plastic. And even like the undercarriage of the car as well. Uh, are all little plastic pieces, so you got to be very careful as these are separate. The mufflers are separate from the rest of the car. You don't want to accidentally clip those. So there's a little bit more fragile things to it than the more durable. I don't even want to say more durable, but as you saw with the Batgirl, um, the 57 Chevy didn't have the side mirrors. It didn't have the antenna. It didn't have the crest on the front of the hood. It didn't really have anything on it that could potentially break. Uh, between the two, I kind of still like Poison Ivy's a little bit more. One thing that's nice is that Jada Toys made each vehicle unique to the corresponding character that comes with them. And hopefully, as we have a look at the rest of the lineup, um, each one of, of course, the bombshells will vary from one another. As so could be said for the cars that come included with them as well. If you're interested in getting into the collecting of the DC bombshells and diecast car line, I don't blame you. You can currently find a lot of them starting to show up in retail stores and comic book stores if you want to start adding these to your collection. Having already looked at two, I can tell you that I'm a big fan of these. I like the bombshells already to start off with, but the fact that they also include sweet rides, which I said in the last review, is all the more reasoning why you would want to pick these ones up for yourself. This sort of fits in that nice little wheelhouse, if you will, of people that are into die-cast car collecting, like the 118 scale cars. These ones are a little bit smaller, but the trade-off is that they take up a lot less space and you also get yourself the Bombshells Vixen that comes included with them as well. To check out more also from Jada Toys, you can swing on over to their website at www.jadatoysinc.com. Today we were continuing our looks at the DC Bombshells lineup from Jada Toys. This was the Poison Ivy and 1953 Chevy Bel Air. A nice looking car. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Jada Toys reviews, there's a playlist called, yeah, you guessed it, Jada Toys. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below that will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss a beat and more videos will be coming your way. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.